Hi, I'm Wesley Liu. I'm a member of the Youth Advisory Board of the California Association of Youth Boards. I'm joined today by Don Carney, a board member of the California Association of Youth Boards for part three of our uh, Kayak Board Spotlight Series. And I just wanted to note that the Board Spotlight Series is really an opportunity to get to know the people behind the California Association of Youth Sports and what drives them to do what they do. Very important work. Uh, my first question for you, Don, is where are you from and what is your favorite childhood memory? Wow. Uh, I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. That's where I grew up. And one of my favorite childhood memories is um, they closed the schools because of snow oh. and we grew up pretty poor and we didn't have a sled and my mother, uh, because we were home from school said, Hey, we're going to go buy a sled today. And I was a little worried about us being able to pay the utilities. And she said, well, the utilities will always be there, but you don't have a snow day every day. So we went to a local park not far from my house. They had a big hill. And it was delightful to see my mother uh, in sort of a play childhood state. Uh, that's not something I experienced a lot because she had a lot on her plate very early in life. Yeah. It, it seems like, Don, since you were young, you were really responsible and sort of thinking about a whole list of things. Uh, but I'm I'm glad to hear you say that that you enjoy your time in Pittsburgh. We don't see much snow here in California, uh, but <laughs> but I'm glad you enjoy your time there. Uh, my second question for you, Don, is how did you end up working in juvenile justice? Boy, um, I had an opportunity to run a group home in Pittsburgh. A friend of mine was in the probation department and uh, they were opening a new group home and she wanted me to keep an eye on it and report back to her. So uh, I got that experience for about a year and then I moved to California. And as soon as I got to California, I applied for a job running a group home uh, out here. And within a year, we got our own license, opened two group homes and a school for wards of the court. So that was my beginning of working with kids who were involved in um, either the child protection part of the world or the juvenile justice part of the world. Wow, it seems like uh, in addition to your work with California Association of Youth Courts, starting out in group homes really helped uh, shape your, your vision of juvenile justice. And I imagine it's pretty relevant to your role in your local uh, juvenile justice commission in Marin and inspecting these facilities. Uh, my, my third question for you, Don, is what drives you to do what you do? Well, growing up, my sister was involved with the juvenile justice uh, world and locked up about half a dozen times before she was 18. And that put an enormous stress on the family. And the family was already fairly stressed. So I think that's part of it. Uh, part of it uh, for me is um, being justice involved as a young man and seeing uh, the advantages I had even in that system with white privilege as opposed to other people of color who were stuck in that system. And uh, I was able to get out and they were not. Yeah, white privilege and systemic disparities are are big issues that that society is still concerned about. So so it's it's great to hear that that this is still something that you recognize and something that that you continue to work with today. Uh, my fourth and final question for you, Don, is more of a forward looking uh, projection question. It is, what do you envision the future of juvenile justice to be like? Well. What the seeds I'm trying to sow is uh, looking at juvenile justice uh, through the lens of public health and moving as far upstream as you can to curb the situation. And we are now working with the school district uh, in elementary schools using a restorative 
process called community building circles to identify high adverse childhood experiences early in life so we can help those young people heal uh, before they hit middle school because the adults in the school system, once a kid's got a little bit of that middle school attitude and trauma-driven aberrant behavior, there's not a lot of, uh, what can I say, compassion for that person. And they tend to deal with the person uh, punitively rather than uh, restoratively. Yeah, that, that is certainly an important issue. And I'm glad that you're sort of thinking ahead of the curve uh, in that regard. And I, 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 I know I promised that that was the final question, but I did have one more question. And it's about sure. youth, tran youth transforming justice. Could you briefly describe uh, what makes youth transforming justice uh, such a pioneer in, in the field of restorative justice and sort of the story behind youth transforming justice? Well, I think we're, we're innovative for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is, I was very disappointed with the way we began replicating a superior court process with a prosecutor and a defender. Um, it was, uh, I had very well-meaning young people prosecuting and re-traumatizing kids who were referred to the program. And when I talked to the young people about uh, choosing a win-win system over a win-lose system. Um, they got excited about that. And then trusting youth agency and allowing young people to shape the program rather than just coming in and replicating something that had been happening before. So our relationship with the young people we work with is, uh, I call it a horizontal relationship rather than a hierarchical relationship. And that's proven to be very fruitful in having young people shape the program and make it uh, effective for their peers. Uh, they have come up with things that I would not have thought of. And uh, it's really made a difference in the branding and who we are. Yeah, I really appreciate what you said about sort of shifting away from an adversarial model and also giving youth a seat at the table and trying to listen to youth and understand them uh, and, and their concerns. So I thank you so much, Don, for joining us uh, for this session of Board Spotlight interview here today. And once again, um, Don, I really appreciate the work that you do. And I'm confident in saying that restorative justice and youth courts would certainly be different uh, without you. So thank you so much, Don. Yeah, thank you, Wesley. It was a pleasure.